Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Assalamu alaikum, my third secondary students. Welcome to the second semester of your lessons online for your book, Traveler three, uh, 6, sorry. And today we have a revision for Unit 3. So this is going to be easy because you're going to remember what we've done for Unit 3. So as usual, today we have five things to remember. So today we will learn how to practice speaking in which a student or the student solve uh, solves a problem number two to use some words and expressions correctly three to apply the listening skill and four to write a letter of application and five to use appropriate phrases in writing an essay so for number one we're going to try to speak and while we're speaking we're going to learn how we find some solutions for some problems for students and for number two we're going to use some new vocabulary, some expressions, and for three, we're going to have some listening skills. So uh, I really ask you to get your headphones ready. We're going to listen to uh, a program about you know identifying how people are talented or not. And for number four, we're going to remember. You remember how we write a letter of application, how to apply for a job, and today we're going to apply for a volunteer job and. For five, we're going to use some phrases that help us write in a very good way. So you remember the two geniuses, those two who have really uh, special talents. This is Le uh, Leonardo da Vinci, who painted the Mona Lisa uh, painting, one of the most you know, expensive and most famous paintings all, all around the world. And the second one is Albert Einstein who's uh, the master of science and math. So what do we know about people? We just told you about these people. They're very famous. They're, uh, this is, they call it, you know, the mastermind of drawing and painting. Leonardo da Vinci, a great talented person, and Albert Einstein, a very great genius who, uh, you know, who really excelled in math and science. So this is the Mona Lisa drawn by Leonardo da Vinci, which is a very famous painting. And also this is Albert Einstein with his, you know, math rules and theories and also in other fields like science. So listen now to the program speaking about talents. Good morning. Today we are continuing with our series on the mind and intelligence. In our studio here today, we have Gary Simpson an educational psychologist who will tell us something about the secrets of being a genius. Welcome, Gary. Thank you. Well, for many years, it has been said that a genius is born with special abilities and possesses high intelligence. For example, a genius is characterized by strong individuality, imagination, and creativity, in addition to extreme intelligence. We apply the term genius to Leonardo da Vinci, Albert Einstein, and many more. Does a genius possess a superior talent in any specific field? Yes, certainly. Einstein, for instance, was a genius in physics and mathematics, while da Vinci was gifted in many areas such as art, engineering, and philosophy. How did Leonardo da Vinci enrich himself to develop greater intelligence? Isn't it estimated that his IQ was approximately 220? that he possessed great skill and creativity. Yes, that is a fact. Leonardo himself stated that there were seven secrets that could help you to become a genius. Firstly, he said that one must have an incredible curiosity about one's surrounding world, as well as a burning desire to discover and achieve. Secondly, he insisted that knowledge must be constantly tested through experiences. Thirdly, he stated that the senses need to be constantly sharpened so that there can be an understanding of the true nature of things and not just the outer appearance of things we observe. The fourth secret is that we must accept vagueness and trust forces that can influence our lives. The fifth characteristic is that one must develop a balance between art and science in order to live a varied and interesting life. His sixth secret was that one must lead a healthy lifestyle because he felt health and fitness would boost mental power. 
So should we be more aware of our diet in order to improve our IQs? Most definitely. If we eat healthily, we will boost our energy levels and our ability to think clearly and creatively. Remember that creativity is essential to being a genius. What was his final secret? He felt that all the phenomena in the world are connected in some way. That is, energy, laws, nature, and so on. We know that a genius may come in many forms. Leonardo was artistic. What can you tell us about Albert Einstein? We know he was a mathematics and physics genius. But did his genius show itself in early childhood? Or did he develop it later in life? Let me tell you about Einstein when he was young. When he was five years old, his father gave him a pocket compass. He immediately realized that there was something in the empty space that moved the needle. This observation left a lasting impression on his mind. Do highly intelligent children have a clearer understanding of situations or some sort of superior memory? Is that what sets them apart? Yes, they differentiate themselves from others with great originality of thought. For example, when Einstein was six years old, he began various creative activities and built models and mechanical devices for fun. When he was at school, he developed a strong liking for mathematics, but he hated the way it was taught by teachers using strict learning methods. Is there any way that we can encourage our children to strive for higher goals? There are many ways. I would advise families to switch off the TV, as it's not a creative activity. I also think that it's a good idea to encourage children to read a variety of books and do arts and crafts. These activities provide a stimulating environment for children and encourage them to think creatively. So, it seems that creativity and the role of the environment are crucial in becoming a genius. Certainly, but a positive self-image is very important too. These children often carry a little notebook or PDA to write down creative ideas and thoughts based on their observations. Yet, most importantly, these super intelligent children ask many questions and they are extremely imaginative. But don't assume that it's all work and no play for them. They also have fun and enjoy life to the full. Thank you for a most interesting discussion. So that was the part for the listening. So what we have listened was a program, okay, on a radio telling us about how to identify, to identify a genius or a talented person and what are the characteristics of this. Now we're going to have some questions after the listening, as you know. You remember this conversation before. So uh, let's fill the spaces as, uh, you know, we heard. So besides intelligence, other characteristics of a genius are strong individualism, imagination, and creativity. And for two, when he spoke about Leonardo da Vinci, believed that curiosity about the surrounding world is one of the secrets of being a genius. And for number three also, for Leonardo da Vinci, believed you need sharp senses so you can understand the nature of things. And also for four, he also believed that it is important to lead a healthy lifestyle as this increases mental power and for five Albert Einstein was considered to be a genius in mathematics and physics and for number six the what of Albert Einstein the pocket compass that was given by his father so the pocket compass Albert Einstein received from his father had a strong influence on him and for seven as a child Einstein hated the way math was taught in the schools so that was a the part of the uh listening so let's go and talk about you now you're uh third secondary and you're just like you know two or three months to finish your high school so let's talk about your job in the future so what career path do you want to follow and why you can see here in the photo we got a cook a doctor a lawyer maybe a teacher a worker an engineer a chef or a waiter and someone else maybe a secretary so you should have started earlier to think about your career 
where you want to go, what do you want to do, what do you want to study, what do you need, what FRH, where. So all these questions you need to ask yourself so you get yourself ready for the future career. And this is really one of the most important decisions you'll ever make your whole life. So let's ask these questions and help you find a way to do the same for yourself. So first, I ask myself, what is this problem about and what do I need to find the answer? I see that the problem asked me to offer some advice to solve the problem of which major should someone choose. So I will need to know who the person is and I will need to know what the problem is and finally I need to know what the possible solutions are. So what do you want to do? Uh, who's, who's the person you want to be in the future? And if there are any problems, how you're going to find some solutions for them. For example, if we have a problem, how are we going to solve it? Let's take an example or a situation. So Khaled needs to decide what area of study to major in when he goes to college. He's very intelligent and has excellent grades, so he would do well in anything. Let's offer some advice to help solve this problem. So what is the problem? Let's take an option. Now, his problem is that his parents are pushing him to become a doctor because he would always have a secure job and make enough money to live on. The other option is that now Khaled, he spends all his free time making paintings. He loves doing this and is considering a career as a professional artist, which his parents are unhappy about. So this is the problem with Khaled. Khaled, his parents want him to be a doctor because this is a great job. It's a secure job. He can always find a way to live on. He can make a, you know, some good money. He can feel so much respected. But Khaled feels that he's an artist. So he, spend, uh, he spends most of his time doing some drawing and paintings. So he doesn't want to make his parents angry. And really, he wants to follow his passions. So what we're going to do here. So his parents are pushing him to become a doctor and Khaled wants to be an artist. We can use these words to talk to Khaled. We can say it's an immature uh, decision for a young man to see the future. If he wants to be a, an artist, he's going to reach a dead end job. Well, actually, he's going to stay unemployed. And also, this kind of artistic job has no job security. So it's an impractical decision for Khaled. So he can take you know, his artistic, you know, uh, compassion or passion for drawing as a hobby and he can go for his practical life and become a doctor. So we have two sample solutions. The first solution we can, uh, you know, advise Khaled. Well, I think a medical degree is an excellent choice for your brother because, you know, you're talking to Khaled's brother. It's a major decision because being trained as a doctor is a rewarding job and entails job security. For the second solution to advise uh, Khaled or Khaled's brother, I don't think that Khaled should become a professional artist because his parents would be, wouldn't be happy about it. He could always continue drawing as a hobby and at the same time follow his parents' advice. Yet, it is true that if this is his you know, vocation and he really believes in it, he should go for his dream. He needs to be determined and sure about it. So the first solution is that you choose something secure. You choose something for your future and you don't only think about yourself. You need money, you need a house, you may have a family and children. So you're not going to be alone. So the best choice is that you choose to be a doctor and you get some support from your parents and be very successful and practical in your life. And there will always be some time for you to, to practice your hobby. So you're doing the two things. So we had some examination practice, if you remember in the previous lessons. So it's a little bit a practice for your grammar. And we talked about you know, uh, how we uh, use whether and wrong and how we change into direct, uh, from direct speech into uh, reported speech. 
So if you have questions, let's see how we do it. Do you remember these, uh, you know, uh, uh, questions? The first one, which is a direct question. Are you working today, Peter? He asked me. So if you have a direct question, we use if or whether. So the sentence becomes he wanted to know if or whether. And you have a present continuous here and use the past continuous. Also for number two, I rang you last night, John, said Brian. Brian explained to John that he and use the word rung, which is the pass of ring. And finally, I have been standing in this queue for two hours, said the man. So the man complained and we complete the sentence. So for number one, he wanted to know whether or if Peter was walking that day. I rang you last night, John, said Brian. Brian explained to John that he uh, had rung him the previous night and finally the man complained about standing in that queue for two hours if we move on maybe to the final uh, skill for today which is writing so you inshallah graduated and finished the high school and you're looking for a job so you go for uh, you know some websites you need to write your resume and also you need to go um reading the news and some some magazines to find a, a life job or a good job for you so have you ever written any kind of a letter of application and what for so today we'll tell you about the basic things and the most important tips to follow so you can make an impressive cv or a resume so you start with your resume you put your picture like this and this is how you write a, a, a letter of application so what we're gonna do we start with the greeting so use an appropriate greeting and it's always formal then you start with the opening paragraph for the for the opening paragraph you set phrases to state what you're trying what you're applying for say where you saw the relevant notice or the advertisement then the main part you mention your age, describe any relevant qualifications, qualities, or experience, and then give information about your present situation or work experience, and finally state any relevant interests or hobbies. And finally, for the closing paragraph, explain why you think your application should be taken into consideration then ask for any additional information you require. If relevant, mention that you enclose a CV or a reference. And the final step is that when you sign off, you use a formal signature ending and also some ending words like sincerely yours or faithfully yours. So let's see if you have some uh, time for like two or three weeks. Um, on summer and you're looking for volunteer job because you need experience so you have seen this advertisement and have decided to apply as a volunteer write your letter of application what you're gonna do you read the volunteers needed do you have some free time during the summer would you like to help give something back to the community volunteers are needed to work as assistants to instructors at the Wilton Community Center. What do you need? Volunteers must, one, like working with people and be able to work in a team. Two, be skilled in one of the following areas, art, sports, uh, computer technology, and also number three, be at least 16 years old. Send applications to John White at Wilton Community Center, uh, 43 Willow Lane, Wilton, and this should be by 10 of May. So you read that and you started this kind of a letter of application, which, it, which needs, uh, you know, volunteers in art and technology. So here you go. Let's do the steps and the tips that we mentioned before. You start with this formal greeting. Dear Mr. John White, I'm interested in an opportunity to volunteer with the Wilton Community Center. I have experience working with people and would like to continue to do so in a volunteer capacity. I volunteered as a coach at the Chapel Lane School and enjoyed being able to help teenagers learn during their first experience in a classroom. 
In this position, I assisted with school's projects. For the past several winters, I volunteers with children on the slopes of a local ski resort, assisting coaches with teaching basic skiing to toddlers and elementary school age children. If the Welton Community Center has a need for a dedicated volunteer, I would be thrilled to have the opportunity to assist. My schedule is flexible and I'm available evening and weekend hours as well as during the day. Sincerely, your name, you write it and you sign off. All right, so what we've learned today, we learned some grammar about the reported speech and how we really do, uh, you know, reported speech with questions. If you have direct question, we use whether. If we don't have direct question, we don't use whether. That is a very good, uh, you know, reminder for you. And also, we had some, you know, five minutes listening about the two talented, very famous, you know, uh, geniuses, which is, uh, you know, Albert Einstein, the mastermind of math and science, and Leonardo da Vinci, the greatest uh, artist of all time. And also we got some speaking about Khaled and his parents, and we helped him solve a problem. We got some, you know, examination practice of how we use some appropriate words in the sentences. And finally, we just finished talking about how we write a letter of application starting with an open, open in paragraph, do some main parts, and close the paragraph with some... Uh, nice words like sincerely yours, yours, and so on. So these were taken from Traveler Six Year Book. And finally, for more information and lessons, you can visit our website ain.egu.sa and then follow us on Twitter for ain underscore egu and on this number for any inquiry or any updates. Thank you for watching this. Hope I see you again. Until then, assalamu alaikum.